blessed Lord's Day, brothers and sisters in Christ. Please stand as we recite Psalm 100 responsibly. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. pray together. Dear Lord, we are touched by your grace and mercy. Your kindness leads us to repentance. Please listen to our prayer of confession. Forgive us, Father. Merciful God, thank you for forgiving us and cleansing us of all unrighteousness. Thank you for the joy of being under your wings of protection. May you be glorified here and in every spiritual act of worship in our daily lives. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen.
Please stand. Let us read responsibly John chapter 14, verses 21 to 27. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. May the Lord bless us in the reading and understanding of his words. Sunday after Jesus' resurrection, we read and meditated upon part of Jesus' message to his disciples on his last night before his crucifixion. Those were his parting words to the eleven. All the eleven were there because as John, the Gospel writer, tells us in chapter 13, Judas had left their company at the time. His farewell message found in a good portion of chapter 13 all the way to chapter 17 is of utmost importance. As these were the words he wanted his disciples to remember very well, <clears throat> for at least two reasons. First, this message summarizes, in a way, his three years of teaching, living with them, and preaching, and discipling. And second reason being that chapter 14 contains promises to help allay their present fears, to comfort them, and to assure them that he will always be with them despite the fact that he was about to face his impending death and that he was going to be physically absent from them for a while. So those are the two important reasons why he spoke these words, particularly in chapter 14. Now, there are at least two main messages that I said I was going to share with you about uh, Jesus' teaching here in this particular chapter, one of which was Jesus teaching about the Holy Spirit, whom he promised he would send to his disciples after his departure from the world. Now, just as, just as a review, we understood the following uh, from our uh, reflections last Sunday, that the Holy Spirit, first of all, is a person that the Holy Spirit is another paracletos, one called to come alongside someone to be the advocate, comforter, counselor, and helper. Fourth, that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth, 
and that the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, and God the Father are one, are in intimate communion with one another. They are one and the same. God in three persons. And so the second focus of John 14 is Jesus' discussion about the love relationship between Jesus and his disciples, which we will delve into today. The love relationship between Jesus and his disciples. That is what is of utmost importance. Now, please turn your Bibles, if you have them with you, to our scripture reading in John chapter 14, starting with verse 21 up to verse 27. Now, within these verses, I was able to list seven promises of Jesus, two statements of truth, and only one command for that time, or at least for the time being. So let us begin with the two statements of truth. First, Jesus said that his words are from God the Father and not his own. Jesus' words are from God the Father and not Jesus' own words, as if it was separate from the Father. This establishes the divine authority and role of God the Father in sending Jesus on a mission. It also emphasizes the unity of God the Father and Jesus Christ. Okay? So, we are made to understand that as God incarnate, meaning to say God in human form, who is one with God from eternity but sent to earth on his mission of salvation and revealing what the kingdom of God is all about, Jesus Christ on earth took on the role of being subordinate to the authority, to the will and power of God, the Father in heaven. Yet, at the same time, he remained equal with God. So he said, I and the Father are one. He remained equal with God in terms of his very nature and his being essentially in essence, true God, being God. No? Magkapareho at iisa silang Diyos, pero sa pagkakataong nagkatawang tao si Jesus, may kanya-kanya silang papel o sabihin na natin tungkulin sa gawa ng pagliligtas sa tao. May misyon ang Diyos Ama at yung misyon na yon ay gagawin niya sa pamamagitan ng kanyang anak meaning to say the incarnate God, the God in flesh. So, ang Diyos Ama ang nagsugo at ang Diyos Anak na si Jesus ang sinugo na magtubo sa pagpamagitan ng pag-aalay ng kanyang buhay sa krus. Ang Diyos Ama sa pamamagitan ng kapangyarihan at lakas ng banal na Espiritu naman ang siya rin bumuhay kay Jesus at nagupo sa kanya o nagluklok sa kanya sa kanan niya sa kalamitan. And so by the power of the Holy Spirit that he exerted upon Jesus, he raised him from the dead and seated him on the right hand of Father in heaven. Yon ang sinasabi sa atin sa Ephesians. No? And so Jesus emphasized the truth that his words are from God the Father. It, it carries with it the authority of God, the Father, the supreme authority, the divine authority of God the Father, and not just his own words as a human being, which also shows that you see there is a complete communion between the Father and the Son. There is that interrelationship with the Father and the Son. In the same way Jesus once also said, the Son can do nothing by Himself. He can do only what He sees His Father doing. Because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. For the Father loves the Son 
and shows him all he does. So we see how completely they are intertwined, intimately related. They are one in purpose, almost one. Yes, one in doing the same thing. Remember, Jesus said, whatever the Father does, the Son also does. So this description of the interrelationship between God the Father and God the Son is grounded on their love for one another. Ganun pala yung tunay na pagpapakita ng tunay na pag-ibig. Kung ano yung isa, ganun din yung kapila. God is showing us here the perfection of love and that is the unity in mind, in purpose, in words, in actions, in will, everything. This is what we glean from what our Jesus, our Lord, is or was trying to teach the disciples and is teaching us right now. This is love. Let us keep this grounding of love in mind because this is the same principle at work between in the love of Jesus Christ for his disciples and vice versa. That is the whole point of the second message. The love relationship. Okay, now the second truth that Jesus said as a general statement is this, the one who loves Jesus is the one who obeys. This is the meaning, this is the practical application, and this is the proof of love for Jesus. This one statement definition of love for the Lord is simple enough for his disciples then and for us today to understand, I believe. There is very little else that we need to break down and unpack or explain. Earlier in verse 15, which we did not include as part of our scripture reading, but was part of our reading last Sunday, Jesus was talking directly to his 11 disciples when he said, If you, referring to the 11, if you love me, keep my commands. And then he repeats the same principle in verse 21, which is the beginning of our scripture reading. And this time, he addresses it to no particular person or persons. But he said, whoever, whoever. And so that means anyone else in the world and anyone else at any point in time which then includes us today and this is what he said whoever has my commands and keeps them in other words whoever has uh, recognized heard understood my commands and keeps them obeys them is the one who loves me the one who loves, obeys. So, sino ang tunay na nagmamahal kay Jesus? Let us reflect upon the fact that Jesus taught the importance of that relationship of love between him and his best friends, his disciples, and chose it as his farewell message, as he was bidding them his farewell. No? I have seen, I have heard of, and I have experienced, and I believe many of you have also uh, done or have also experienced many deathbed conversations. And almost always, the most important message that the dying and those who will be left behind, the loved ones to be left behind, is the affirmation of love. Hindi po ba? Hindi ba kapag dumadating na yung inaakalang sandali ano, ng katapusan ng buhay? O minsan kapag uh, grabe na at uh, iniisip na yun na ang kahuli-hulihan nilang pag-uusap? Hindi po ba ang sinasabi ng mamamatay at ng kanyang mga maiiwan ay ganito, I love you. Huwag mong kakalimutan. Mahal kita. Mahal ko kayo. Hindi po ba? Ganoon pala yun. 
That's the whole point of relationships. Pero bilang kanilang guro, may kakaiba ang sinabi o ang pinitiwan na salita ng Panginoon during this particular portion of his discussion or discourse. Ang sabi niya, kung iniibig ninyo ako, tutuparin ninyo ang aking mga tinuturo. Ang tumatanggap sa mga utos ko at tumutupad sa mga ito ang siyang umiibig sa akin. By framing his statement this way, he was leaving it up to his apostles as he is leaving it up to us today to examine ourselves whether we truly love him as we often say or sing that we do. And so, love for Jesus is more of a deep understanding and determined action rather than simply an emotion or an emotional response of the moment, of the moments. If you love me, you will obey what I command. And so here we say, if that is the conditional phrase, is there love? Love goes before obedience. And then obedience proves that love. Why would we love Jesus? Well, first of all, because of a deep understanding of what he did for us. There's got to be a more profound and intentional reflection about who Jesus really is in our lives. He was a historical person. He walked this earth. He breathed our air. He ate the food that many of us eat. And yet he was here for a very um, unfathomable purpose and he said it was out of his love for you and for me for those who whom he met physically and even those beyond for the rest of the ages until he comes again he suffered he died in our place so that we may be forgiven of all our sins that automatically has already condemned us to hell if not for his sacrifice on the cross and his victory over death which you know which gives a final stamp of approval of the acceptance of his sacrifice victory over death we love jesus because he accomplished what no other could we love Jesus because without him, we would not come to know the truth about God, our creator, and the divine purpose of our life. Without that knowledge, we would be going through life deceived by the devil and would die only to meet our eternal death. That is why we love Jesus. And so those are the two main truths that Jesus emphasized in our reading today. That his words are from God the Father and not his own words. And that the one who loves him is the one who obeys. That is the truth. Those are the two important truths. The next logical question that we ask is this. What are the commands that Jesus says those who love him obey? So tanungin natin, Ay Lord, ako ba ay sumusunod sa inyo? So I can say that I love you. He had been asked once before what the greatest commandment is, and he simply repeated what Moses had passed on to the ancient Israelites as he received it from God. And that is, love God and love one's neighbor. He said, this is the bottom line of all the commandments 
that they have been given in the whole of their scriptures, the Old Testament. The Mosaic Law, first five books of the Old Testament, the writings of the prophets, all the way to the last, Malachi. And at his last Passover meal with his disciples, he reminded them to love one another. Okay. As he said, it is by living this way that people will be able to tell that they are really Jesus' disciples. Now Jesus commands that we, he said that they should obey. We're not actually different or contrary to what the Father, God the Father had given his people Israel as they were yet looking to the coming of the Messiah. You see, the Old Testament is um, the period before the coming of the Messiah. The prophecies and everything, God's relationship with his new people, the Israelites. So God had to, God gave them laws commandments to live by so that you know just like little children they would be guided along their way along that um, promised Messiah since it was just like a vision from afar it was it was a promise it was something that was not yet concrete Jesus commands were not really different rather he explained and contextualized God's laws in the light of the Messiah already present in the world. Ano bang kahulugan? Nung lahat ng mga sinabi ng Diyos Ama ni Yahweh sa unang bayan niya na Israel na ngayon ay nagkaroon na ng kaganapan, i-contextualize na sa buhay nila under the, that particular time. He opened their eyes to the fact that they were already seeing the fulfillment of the prophecies and the full spiritual and practical meaning of the laws. We have talked about this a number of times, one of which is the Passover, the Lamb. Okay. And Jesus being the Lamb of God, that is just one of them. His commands were mostly teachings, actually, on a new way of life. A belief system, a worldview in the spirit. So he said, I am, I am teaching you the spirit of the law. Ano ba talaga ang kuhulugan noong mga isa-isang mga inutos ng Diyos through Moses? He taught them really a kind of life that is truly under the rule of God, the kingdom of God, even while they were still or are still in this world where the devil wields influence over sinful, unregenerate people. Papaano ba mamuhay ang isang taong tunay na nasa, kailat, nasa ilalim ng kaharian ng Diyos? The whole of the New Testament contains Jesus' teachings and every time we open the Bible to study it, we learn one teaching at a time. But as a summary, we can name some of the general themes and topics that opens the mind or has already opened our minds to what that kingdom of God is. First of all, of course, Jesus revealed who he is. He had to introduce himself in various ways through his parables, his teachings, his preaching, his miracles, the signs, and all who he is through the scriptures. Secondly, he also taught why he came. His salvation, the meaning of his crucifixion, the resurrection, he explained it. He also taught what rebirth by the Spirit is all about to Nicodemus and to all of us. He taught what God's that about he taught about God's love for repentant sinners. He continuously and repeatedly um, explained and expressed in several ways what it meant for God to love us. He taught true worship of God from the heart. A worship that is not only ritualistic, all the rituals are important, but a worship that encompasses all of life. Putting God first in everything. 
He thought about love for the family, and then from the family, the neighbor, and, the, and beyond the neighbor, love for enemies. He thought about forgiveness. Forgiveness was a big thing to Jesus. And then, of course, the cost of discipleship. What does it mean to follow Jesus? He thought about what true treasures really are. The true treasures on earth and in heaven. He thought about humility in service. He thought about integrity. Being the same inside as you are outside. He thought about faith and prayer and the power of God. He thought about the blessedness of being in the kingdom of God. He thought about the coming Holy Spirit. He introduced the Holy Spirit. He also thought about abundance, generosity in life, what it really meant when one is abundant. He thought about the church that he was about to build. He commanded and he thought about the proclamation of the gospel that it is not for the disciples to keep to themselves, but that they will be given the power to witness and to explain that message in a way that is true to his word. And of course, he thought about the last days, the final judgment and the eternal rewards. And of course, the last days includes his coming again, the second coming and the kingdom that will be established, the kingdom without end. Okay, so all of these things, these are Jesus' teachings. They are not so much a list of do's and don'ts as they are um, a way of expressing love for God, love for neighbor, as we love ourselves. I'm sure you might have other other topics, themes in mind right now. But we can see that Jesus taught not a set of commands, but a way of life that is in harmony with God's kingdom principles and practices. When it comes to our relationship with Jesus Christ, he made it quite clear that love for him and obedience are inextricably connected. It cannot be one without the other. True love cannot be true love unless there is obedience. As we grow in our love for Jesus, we will obey him more, not simply out of duty or because it is a requirement. Because you see, when it is out of duty and requirement, we usually ask, what is the minimum allowable? Di ba mahilig tayo sa ganun yung minimum? Ano ba ang minimum? Ano ba ang deadline? Mga ganun. Yun ang mga minimum. But uh, when we truly love, we want to do maximum, right? We want to overshoot whatever it is. We want to be able to express it even much more than we are sometimes able to. Because when we love out of love for Jesus, it is out of a deep sense of reverence and, of course, affection. And as we obey, we grow deeper in love. You see, the two, love and obedience, reinforce each other. In these verses, Jesus did not so much as give commands. He gave only one command, by the way, because that, that, that thing about love and obedience was, was couched in a question form. If you love me, whoever loves me will obey. But he had one command in those verses that we read. He only gave one. He said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. Hindi po ba? Doon ko nakita, sabi ko, sa haba-haba pala ng mga verses na yun, wala namang mga, walang pinag-utos ang Panginoon, kundi sabi niya, huwag kayong magulumihanan. Sa Tagalog, ano ba yung do not be, do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. Um, kaya ang sabi niya, huwag kayong mabagabag. Huwag mabagabag ang inyong kalooban at huwag kayong matakot. Yan ang pinag-utos ng Panginoon doon sa kanyang mga disipulo nung sila ay nasa ilalim na ng napaka 
matinding pag-aalangan dahil o pagkatakot dahil alam nila mawawala na ang kanilang pinakamahalagang guro at kaibigan. On the other hand, what we see are a lot of promises. There are seven promises that we can identify for those who will love and obey. These, uh, these were his promises. First, the one who loves Jesus will be loved by the Father. Okay, this is his promise. So we ask ourselves, does it mean that if we do not love Jesus, we will not be loved by the Father? Oh. Uh, there is a different kind of love. This is the love that, that the true love where there is truly a, an intimate relationship with the triune God. If you do not, Jesus said, if you do not believe me, then you do not really believe in God. So Jesus Christ is the cross, the very central to the meaning of God loving his people in a very special way. Of course, God loved the world generally, but there is a special love that is, you know, that that is operating in that close relationship between the Father, God the Father, and the one who loves Jesus. And so we say, God loves everyone. That is why we need to share the gospel to those who do not yet know Jesus Christ. Oo, mahal sila ng Panginoon. Sila ay mga nilikha ng Panginoon. Kaya nga gusto niya na tayo ay magbahagi ng magandang balita. Kailangan mahalin nila si Jesus dahil siya ang daan sa Ama. That communion happens only, the communion with the Father happens in relationship with Jesus Christ. There is no one comes to the Father. Sabi nga, no one comes to the Father, to the to the heart of the Father, to the chamber of His heart, unless they know and receive Jesus Christ. Secondly, Jesus will also love those who love Him. Again, this is a different kind of, this is a, this is a, an intimate kind of relationship. Just as the Father loves people in general, Jesus loves people, but there is this special love, yes, that is communing with those who love him. Okay, thirdly, Jesus will show himself, meaning to say make himself known even more to those he loves. And when he loves that person, he will show himself. You know, lalo niyang ipapakilala ang kanyang sarili. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Di ba pag, may, pag mahal natin ang isang tao, when we come into an intimate relationship with someone, then there are just, there is that Deepening of the relationship, right? You get to know the person more deeply, more intimately. There is an understanding. When you become one in mind, you seem to understand the other person. It's reciprocal. That is the kind of relationship that Jesus wants to build with his disciples with us. Hindi shallow, malalim. Number four, the Father and Jesus will come to those who obey. Which is related to the fifth, the Father and Jesus will make their home with those who obey. There is, um, you see, when, when Jesus, I will come to you, meaning to say, will dwell. You know? The Holy Spirit will dwell, uh, meaning to say, will live their lives. God's life will be lived in you. Hindi na ikaw lang ang na mag-isa sa buhay, hindi ikaw lang yung para bang ang buhay mo ay ano lang, day in and day out, ganoon, meron kang mga uh, meron kang mga pangarap, meron kang mga inaasam-asam, meron ka namang gawain, you are busy, but you do not have that intimacy. Yung relasyon ba? Yung nag-uusap kayo ng Panginoon. Kinukonsultan mo siya. So, Jesus said, the Father and I will come to you. Now, magkasama talaga yun dahil kapag tayo ay in communion with, with God, then in Christ, then kasama lahat yun. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. 
And then six, the Holy Spirit will teach the apostles and remind them of everything Jesus taught them. So this was another promise. Jesus said, yes, I am going away, but somebody else will be there with you to continue to teach you. You know how it is when, when the teacher goes away or when we are parted from our, um, our mentors, but when we feel that we are left to our own devices. What if you forget? We are, very, we are forgetful people. What if you don't know how to interpret? Is this what Jesus really meant? Is this what God meant when he said these words? How are we going to express, this in, express it in words so that we are true to the mind of God, the mind of Christ, and that there be no misunderstanding? And Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will be with you. Do not worry. Whatever you put later on in these scriptures, whatever you will be proclaiming, either by mouth or by writing, this will be imbued with the power of the Holy Spirit. You will not be deceived. And so we can trust that um, the scriptures have been breathed, spirit breathed, Holy Spirit breathed. That is Jesus' promise to his, that was his promise to his apostles. And seventh, that Jesus will leave them with his peace. My peace I give you. Peace I leave with you. Okay, my peace I give you. By these promises, Jesus was encouraging his disciples then and encouraging us now. Of the ironclad, no? Devotion and loving relationship that we will enjoy with God, with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, when we learn to love Him more by taking on His way of life and relationship with God, if we obey, if we live by what He had taught. Now, the peace that Jesus imparts does not mean, of course, does not mean the absence of any conflict, of any problem of any doubt, of any frailty, of any failure, or even without any sin. Because as Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. But the peace, the shalom that Jesus promised for the, for the, the disciples while they are still in the world is the ability to please God and to receive God's overflowing comfort, his rewarding love in the midst of the worldliness in the world. Alam ko na hindi, hindi alam ng Panginoon na hindi sa lahat ng pagkakataon at sa lahat ng bagay ay magagawa natin ang pinagagawa niya exactly all the time without fail. But he knows the heart that loves, that desires to obey. And when that heart disobeys, is repentant and feels the stirring of the Holy Spirit who gives the signal that something was wrong. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we face another week, Jesus only has one command for us to remember, and uh, that is, do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. Because if you are in Christ, if you love Him, He will empower you to obey. And as you obey, you will learn to love Him more and more. At first, Obedience is difficult, obedience is hard, obedience is against what you desire. But as we continue to obey, Jesus promises us that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit will dwell in us so that obedience becomes easier, obedience becomes delightful, obedience gives us the evidence of true rewards, the experience of God's life in us. Let us not be troubled. Let us not remain anxious. Let us um, cast away our fears, whatever those may be. 
because Jesus has absolutely amazing promises for those who will follow and love him. God the Father, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus himself will be living the power of their life in us, with us, among us. The challenge for us is this. Let us truly love Jesus from the heart. Obey him for all he has done and obey him because his love never fails. Let us pray. Most loving God, our Father in heaven, oh how our hearts yearn, oh God, to learn more and more and experience more and more of your kind of love, O oh Lord God, that you are so willing to give and continue to pour upon us so much so that you have already proven it by the by sending your son Jesus Christ and which you continue to make us experience oh Lord ever since we put our faith and trust in our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ thank you father for affirming to us today your love your promises and affirming to us today that for those of us who have put our faith in Jesus Christ and are striving to follow him from the heart, we are on the right track. And that you, we will be able to overcome the troubles of this world. But most importantly, Lord, we will be able to overcome the wiles and the deceptions of the evil one. Thank you, Lord, for your great love that continues to forgive us our sins because of Christ's salvation and eternal forgiveness assurance a blessed assurance Lord, that he will never leave us he will not forsake us none of those you have given Jesus Christ will ever be lost Lord, um, we also would like to thank you, O oh God, for most of all for saving our souls and for saving the souls of our loved ones and all those whom we probably don't even know but who have heard the gospel through our own sharing and through our work in the church whatever be the part of the missions and evangelism and outreach we have done in your name, Lord Jesus. We also pray, O oh God, for the world today because it is beset with so many problems with wars, rumors of wars, violence, and the lack of love, coldness towards you, the deception that is prevailing and continues to accelerate as we see the day approaching. We are mindful, O oh God, of all of these things, but even more assured that you will be with us as we continue to share the gospel and to just keep on loving you and loving our neighbor, that they may see how good it is to be a child of God, a disciple of Jesus Christ. Lord, let that goodness just be exuded from each one of us as we relate to one another, to our family, to our friends, to one another as a fellowship here in church, the larger body of Christ, and even to the strangers and most especially to those who are our enemies and those who consider us their enemies. Lord, we lift everything up to you. We know that you are in control and sovereign in all things. But at all times, O oh God, we will be standing firm in the faith and alert to do what is right, even when it is not popular, to do what is good, even when it is not 
easy. Help us, O oh God, to be able to strike this balance that only you in your love can teach us. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus said, Store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Let us give our offerings heartily to God's mission and trust it to the church.
Please stand for our prayer. Dear God, we are eternally grateful to you for saving us and giving us one blessing after another with each new day. We pray that these offerings, given for the holy purpose of your kingdom, will reach the unreached, save the unsaved, and equip the saints for every good work. All for the glory of your name. Amen. sisters in Christ. May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, 
equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever, and all of God's people say, and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.